Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at audio inside of Godot. So, um, in this course so far, we have imported some audio clips. So if we go over to the audio folder and open this up, you'll see we have music and sound effects. Now, you'll see that these have a nice little icon here of this music symbol. Um, and we can also preview these effects. So for example, if we go over to this music track here, we can double click on it and it's gonna open up this uh, audio stream importer. Now we can do a few things here. We can first of all decide whether or not we want this to loop. So this basically means that when this audio track is playing and it reaches the end, what happens? Well, normally when an audio track has finished playing, it's just going to stop. Whereas if we enable loop right here, it is going to basically start all over again. So if you have any music or ambient effects, uh, you might want to enable loop right here. Whereas sound effects like footsteps, we probably don't want those to loop. Um, we can also preview this by clicking on the play button down here. Okay, or we could drag through and play again to basically play it at a certain point. Now, if you have changed any of these settings, such as loop, offset, or um, the BPM here, you can then click re-import and that is going to apply those changes. Okay, um, now we have also footsteps over here. And you may notice that the footsteps and the music are different audio formats, okay? The music is MP3, while footsteps are OGG. Um, now, this is just because that is what um, those sound effects were exported as. Uh, but you might be wondering, okay, what sort of uh, file types does Godot support? Well, Godot supports three different audio formats. They support WAV, OGG, and MP3. So if you are creating your own sound effects, make sure that you are exporting them as one of those three, as that is all Godot uh, has the ability to support. Okay, but generally, those are the three most popular audio formats, so you should have no worries um, in doing that. And if you are looking for audio online, um, generally, they are going to be one of those three as well. So you should be pretty safe. Okay, so now that we have our audio clips, how can we actually get them to play inside of our game here. Well, we need to set up a specific node. So I'm gonna to go to our scene here, I'm gonna click on the plus, and I am gonna search for an audio stream player. Okay, now you see we have a 2D version here and a 3D version right here. So if of course you're creating a 2D game, use the 2D version. Um, and since we are creating 3D games and we might want spatial audio, we are gonna choose the 3D version here. So we'll create that. And now it'll create the node, it'll have a position here in the world which we can move around. But we are going to look over in the inspector, okay? And you'll see there are a large number of different properties that we can change. So first of all, we have the stream property, and this is basically the audio clip we want to play, okay? The audio stream, as Godot calls it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in the street ambience audio stream here, like so. And now if I press play, you'll notice that nothing happens. Now, why is that? We have the audio stream applied, but it's not playing. Well, we do need to change a few things, first of all. Inside the inspector, we're gonna go down to where we have the auto play setting, and we are going to enable that. And that basically means that when this node has been spawned in, it is gonna automatically start playing. So we'll press play again, and now you can hear it. Now, it might be a bit loud, so let's actually turn that down. Okay, we'll turn that down a bit. Um, so to turn this down, we can go to the volume at DB right here, and this is the volume in decibels. So right now it's set to zero, which basically means it is neutral. Um, we can then bring it down to make it quiet and increase it to make it louder. Um, I don't generally recommend increasing the decibels above zero as that can cause audio to start clipping and being too loud. So we're going to bring this down a bit here to about minus 20. We can press play again, and you'll see how it is nice and quieter. Well, it's not, it's not entirely quiet, but it is a bit quieter. And one thing you may also notice is that as I move around, the audio, if you're wearing headphones, is coming from a certain direction, okay? So if I stand here, I can hear in my left, in my right headphone that the audio is coming from this direction here in the center because this is where the node is located. That is where the sound is emitting from, okay? And that is what's great about uh, the 3D audio is the fact that no matter where we are in our world, um, this audio is going to be played spatially. Now, we can also play our audio while here in the editor if you want to test things out. So over in the inspector, we can click on the playing property and enable that. And that means that the audio is going to play 
in the inspect or oh, in the editor right here so we can test our audio and like i said before um we can hear basically in 3d where this audio is playing from and the closer we get the louder it is and the further back we go the quieter it gets okay so that is the audio stream player node um, now in order to actually change some of these settings such as you know how loud it is the further we go away um, we can go into our inspector here where we have unit size now I'm gonna click plane again and I'm gonna change the unit size property and you'll hear and you'll hear what I mean okay so I'll click plane and now if I change the unit size property if I increase it, it gets louder, and that is because this is increasing the attenuation range, which basically means the further away we are, um, we are still going to hear it, okay? So it's basically the range of the audio. Like with lights, how they have their um, attenuation range, so does audio, and that is unit size right here. So if you want an audio clip, maybe something that is very big, like an explosion, um, you probably want a bigger unit size, whereas if you have maybe a character talking, you might want to bring that um, down to the default, okay? As generally, if you're across an entire city block, you probably don't want to hear what somebody is saying um, all that way away. But if in the distance, like half a mile away, uh, you probably want to hear an explosion or something very important. So that is where unit size comes into play. Now, some other effects we can play with, if I click playing again, is pitch scale. So if I change the pitch scale, you can see how it pitches up and pitches down. Okay, so that can be very handy if you want to maybe add in some uh, alternate variations to your audio. For example, generally in games when they have cars, the quickest way of making an engine is by increasing the pitch, as that can then make it appear as if the car is accelerating. And another setting we have is the max distance, and this works hand in hand with unit size. Unit size basically defines the attenuation range, whereas max distance defines the maximum distance at which this sound is played. So if I set the max distance to be 5 for example, you can see this yellow sphere has appeared. Now when I press play, um, if we are outside of this yellow sphere, this audio is going to be not playing whatsoever, but when we enter it, that is when it will begin playing. So if I click play, we can't hear anything, but if I go inside the yellow sphere, there we go, we can hear it now. Out, in, out, okay. Um, so yeah, you can modify these properties depending on what the audio is playing, if it's dialogue, if it's footsteps, if it's some action, if it's music, if it's um, big showcases that you want everyone to hear no matter where they are on the map, you can adjust those settings like that. Now, I'm going to bring max distance back down to zero, and this basically means there is no max distance, okay? So it's entirely relying on the unit size property here to define um, the sound drop-off. Now, you can also change the attenuation model. Um, now, this is a bit more advanced, but um, if you do want to change how your audio drops off, you can change it here. So you can use inverse, you can use inverse square. Um, generally, audio and light use is use inverse square for their drop off. But in games, you know, we probably don't want to match one to one with, with real life because um, generally audio, you probably don't want to have it drop off that drastically. Um, you can if you wish, you can experiment with some of these settings, but generally keeping on inverse by default is going to be um, the most comfortable um, experience when it comes to audio and games. So that is the audio stream player 3D. Now the exact same thing goes for the 2D version. Um, it does have pretty much the same settings. So if we add in a 2D version here, you can see here that we do have a lot of the same settings. Okay. And you can of course adjust these accordingly. Okay, now one final setting we're going to look at is panning strength. Now panning strength basically defines um, how strong the 3D positional audio is because remember when we press play and we move around, if we have headphones on, we can generally hear the direction that the audio is coming from and that is because it is playing at different volumes in each of our headphones. Now if you want audio to appear as if it is playing from everywhere, such as with the street ambience we have right now, we can bring the panning strength down to zero. And if I press play, this is basically going to make the audio appear as if it's just coming from, you know, inside our head or all around us. Um, so if generally for music, for any sort of ambience, you probably don't want the audio to uh, uh, play from any specific direction. So that is a look at the audio stream player in Godot.